I stayed up way past my bedtime last night to play through dozens of demos from Steam's February Next Fest. So let's get into my favorites. The demos I think you should absolutely, without a doubt, play, especially if you don't have time to search through page after page. And if you make your way through all 10 of these, I've posted about even more demos as part of my indie newsletter over on Patreon. The post is 100% free to check out, and it covers a bunch of other games that wouldn't fit into this video. Link below. First up, Pepper Grinder. It's a vibrant 2D platformer with a wonderfully satisfying drilling mechanic that lets you dive in and out of the soil. You know a game's gonna be good when just moving around in it is a total blast. The puzzles here were super clever in just the first few levels alone, so I can't wait to see where the full game takes it. There are also lots of hidden treasures to find, secret areas, new drill bits and upgrades to help you explore, and it's all very pleasing to look at thanks to its simple yet expressive pixel art. A must play for anyone who likes action, platformers, and fast-paced fun. Tiny Terry's Turbo Trip is by far the funniest game I played. Terry here wants to get a car, so that he can launch it into space. And this guy immediately gives him a car, and with it you set off to explore the tiny open city of Sprankle Water. Except for the various buildings you're not allowed to enter because it's just a demo. The game is this wonderfully delightful mix of a snappy 3D platformer and a fixed camera game whenever you're indoors, which makes zero sense but is also amazing to experience. The car physics are wonky, you can go around smashing stuff with a pipe, and get crushed by some elementary school kids in a game of soccer. I don't know, Terry might even be in elementary school himself, it's not really clear, but he's certainly having a good time doing whatever he's doing. Switching the mood here to something a bit darker, this is Indica. I really had no idea what to expect after watching its trailers, but it definitely wasn't a third-person puzzle adventure game in the style of The Last of Us. No zombies here though, just a nun who can speak to the devil. I honestly don't want to say too much, but here are some little details that may convince you to give it a try. You get to ride this little bike through the snow, and the snow physics is really cool. You get to talk to the devil, do some light platforming and puzzle solving, hmm, what else? This is how leveling up works, almost like the video game or something. I'll leave the rest for you to experience. Harold Halibut is unique in that every character, prop, and background you see has been handmade and scanned into the game. That on top of the premise, which is being stuck on a giant spaceship that sits at the bottom of the ocean on an alien planet. And it's easy to see why this is one of my favorite demos of the event. This one is over 10 years in the making, and I could feel every ounce of care and love that's gone into making it when walking around the ship and talking to some of my very weird neighbors. The voice acting is phenomenal, the world building is super well thought out, and I need to know what happens next. The demo is over 50 gigabytes though, so make sure you've got the space for it. Get it? Space? I'm sure most of you aren't surprised to see this one on my list. Pacific Drive finally has a public demo right ahead of its February 2022 launch. It gives you a peek at the story, which will leave you with more questions than answers, but more importantly, you get to drive, upgrade, and care for this beautiful station wagon. The atmosphere falls somewhere between tense, mysterious, and sometimes a little bit goofy. And best of all, you never really know what to expect. Each time you leave your garage to chart new areas in the zone, you're sure to run into something bizarre and learn a little bit more about your new set of wheels. I have a feeling this is going to be the most popular demo of the event and will convince a lot of people to buy the full game. You should go see for yourself though. Botany Manor invites you to sit back and smell the roses. It's a beautiful and relaxing game where growing unique plants is the key to solving puzzles throughout an old English manor. You'll have to explore each room in your house in order to find clues about different types of fauna and then create the perfect conditions for them to grow in. It's definitely a slower paced game and some of the puzzles might stump you, but I was genuinely sad when the demo ended because I was just starting to get the hang of 
of being a professional botanist. And just remember, anything you find could be useful for your research, so make sure you take your time and inspect items carefully if you get stuck. There are a lot of unique looking games on this list, and Haunty is yet another, one that perfectly captures the creepy cute vibes of a haunted afterlife called Eternity. You play as a ghost who's just arrived here and has lost all memories of your past life. You can use your new ghostly form to possess the objects and creatures around you, and overall the vibe is super chill and totally captivating. Each area uses a different color, which gives these places a unique feel. The game also looks, feels, and sounds super polished and smooth, and there's always something gorgeous to look at and discover just around the corner. Now the words poker roguelike may not seem like the most exciting concept out there, but Balatro had me totally mesmerized. Just look at it. The demo was just updated to include a bunch more joker cards to collect and experiment with. Put down cards, get points, unlock new cards, get more points. I played the original version for just over 10 hours the first time around, so uh, I'll get back to you next week maybe. The full game releases very soon on February 20th, and it's the perfect Steam Deck travel companion that'll probably make you forget wherever you're headed to. It is that hypnotic. Out of all the games on this list, I think Fragmented City is most likely to fly under people's radars, and it totally surprised me with how well designed its city is. It's a first-person game about poking around this somewhat dreary place as you search for a strange cult and talk to a bunch of bird people. On Steam, it's described as an adventure game heavily focusing on meaningful exploration and social quests, and it actually does live up to that. The section of the city that you're able to wander around in is densely packed with locked doors, ladders to scale, vents to crawl through, and of course, secrets to find. There's no map either, so you're gonna have to learn the city's layout like the back of your hand. Either that or just stumble your way into different interesting scenarios like I did. And this list wouldn't be complete without a little bit of survival horror, so here's Crow Country. Make your way through an abandoned theme park as you search for clues of its owner's whereabouts. The devs totally nailed the vibes with this one. From the mannequin-like character models, the theme of each attraction, the general feeling of this place being totally abandoned. Oh, you know, besides all the monsters. And if you're not into combat, don't worry because there is an exploration mode, which turns off all the enemy encounters. But you'll still be able to experience the puzzles and mysteries lurking in even the darkest corners of the park. Thank you very much for sticking around to the end with me, and please do let me know what demos you're playing this week, because there are a lot that I won't be able to get to before Next Fest ends. I mean, I could be working my way through these until the next next fest and still not be caught up. So many games.